Advantages of Blockchain The blockchain has many advantages, like the decentralized control, security, integrity, transparency, and immutable storage. There are more advantages coming out day by day. Decentralized control In the first figure, you can see there is a centralized server, which means that there will be this centralized server out here and Many nodes will be there, like this, this, all nodes will be there, which will be connected to the main server. So this is a centralized network. Next, we have a decentralized network in which there is no central authority, but there is one node which is connected to many nodes. There is one node which is connected to other nodes. Like this, it forms kind of a forest, which is having many trees etc so this is having no centralized server therefore this is known as a decentralized network this is a distributed network where each node is connected to every node in the network this is practically not possible at this moment security blockchain maintains its security through hashing and asymmetric encryption, both of which are discussed in my previous video. Transparency and integrity. In a blockchain, especially a public one, everybody has a copy of the ledger with account numbers which is shown to everybody. So account number is basically your public key which anybody can see. And the password for that account number is the private key which only you can see. So, in the ledger, all the transactions are maintained with the account numbers. Like you can see out here, there is this from and there is this to. And there are both account numbers. So, this is the from account number and this is the to account number. There has been a transaction carried out from this account to this account. So, you only know the account numbers. But, Nobody knows the identity, which means that nobody knows who's behind this account. So the transparency is maintained, but the identity is kept secret. Immutable storage. Blockchain has immutable storage. Once data goes into the block, nobody can change it because changing the data will change the hash of the block, which will let the other blocks go invalid because the connection will be broken so as anybody changes a bit of data also the hash will change and all the pro uh, proceeding blocks will get invalid and this also makes it unhackable structure of a block the block structure you can see this one is the structure of a block a single block this is the previous block and this is the next block. So what does a block contain? There is a block header. Like this total part is known as the block header. Which contains metadata. And this is the block body. Which contains the data. So what is a metadata? Metadata is data about data. So what we have in this block header? There will be a version of the block. There will be a parent block hash, which means the previous block's hash will be over here. Then there will be a timestamp. This timestamp is basically the epoch time at which this block was mined. Then the nonce. What is nonce? Nonce is just a number. It will be explained in the next class. This n bits. n bits is known as the difficulty. It is also mentioned in the block header. Then Merkle tree root hash. This is the root hash of the transactions in this body. So and in the block body we have a transaction counter which counts how many transactions have happened and list of transactions like all the transactions like from to value everything is kept in a structure and then all this list is kept in this transaction list. Merkle tree. 
So what is a Merkle tree? Merkle tree is basically a tree type structure, data structure, which has a root node out here, which contains the root hash or the Merkle root. And these are the leaf nodes out here. This, 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 this. All four of them are the leaf nodes. So what happens? Think we have four transactions. So here we have four transactions. Transaction A, B, C and D. So what happens? We pass this transaction data to a hash function and then this hash is stored in the leaf node of the tree. Same for B, same for C and same for D. Now what happens? We take this leaf node and this leaf node and we combine their hashes and put it in the parent node of these two, these two child nodes. So this parent node will contain the hash of combined data of the uh, combined hash of A and combined hash of B. Same with this thing, the parent node will contain the combined hash of C and combined uh, with D. Now, this root hash will contain the combined hash of this part and this part. So at the end, there will only be one root hash of the impossibly many transactions that can be stored in a block. There will be only one root hash, which will come by combining all these different hashes together. Next, why are we using this Merkle tree structure? Because it has a time complexity of log n with the previous time complexity of a list to be n for checking any transaction and verifying it. 